Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be showing you the trigonometric proof to apparent dip problems. So what we have here is we have a visual representation of what it looks like of an apparent dip versus a true dip. So as you can see, this line right here is the strike. Therefore, this has to be the true dip because this is a right angle. Let me go ahead and illustrate that. There is a right angle right here. Therefore, this is the true dip of the plane, and then this is an apparent dip. So if we're wanting to know the true dip of the plane, and we know some of the values of the apparent dip, we can solve this trigonometrically. So the first thing we want to recognize is the fact that the height of this block, D, is the same here and the same here. So what we can do is we can say that AX is equal to dy. And that's ax and dy. All right, so if we know this, we can say that the tangent of aox, that's this angle here, this apparent dip, is equal to the opposite side, which is d in this case, or ax, but we instead, or actually let me just go ahead and write AX, and then over AO. But we know that AX is equal to BY, so let me just go ahead and write in BY here. Okay? Next we're going to try and represent AO differently. So if you take a look at this top face, we're going to look at the triangle AOB. All right, you see that A, O, B. And we can represent A, O as O, B times the secant of A, O, B. And the reason this is is because this is just simply the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So let me write that. We've got the tangent of A, O, X is equal to B, Y over OB secant of AOB. So the question is, why does this make sense? OB times the secant of AOB is just going to be AO. And the reason we can reconcile this is because OB is this side, and the secant of AOB is going to be um, AO over OB. Because remember, the cosine is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, and the secant is the opposite of that. So it's the hypotenuse over the adjacent, so it's going to be AO over OB. That's what the secant, secant of AOB is. And so if we have AO over OB, the OBs are going to cancel, and we're just going to be left with AO. So that's how we are able to substitute this in. The next thing we want to do is we want to substitute out BY for something. And in this case, what we can do is we can say the tangent of AOX is equal to OB secant AOB down here, and then on top we have OB times the tangent of BOY. And then this works through a similar method. What we can say is that BY right here if we examine uh, this triangle right here, the blue one, then what we can say is that the tangent of BOY is going to be the opposite over the adjacent, so in this case BY over BO, and if we were to multiply that out by OB, the OBs would cancel, and we would just be left with BY. All right, from here what you're gonna notice is that OB is on the numerator and denominator, so we can cancel both of those. And we're just left with tangent of AOX equals 
the tangent of BOY over the secant of AOB. And we can similarly represent this as tangent BOY times the cosine of AOB. All right, and now we're ready to use symbols. So BOY is really just this angle, right? This is just the tangent of delta. All right, AOB is just going to be For now, I'm just going to leave this as the angle between a parent dip and true dip. Moving forward, we can say that this tangent of AOX over here so AOX, we know, is just the angle of the apparent dip. So we can say that the tangent of alpha equals the tangent of delta times the cosine of all that stuff. Okay? We don't really have a symbol for this. However, what we do have a symbol for is beta. So if you recall from the last episode, Beta is simply the angle between the strike of a plane and the trend of the apparent dip. So in this picture, beta would be the horizontal angle that goes right here. And that's beta. Okay? And so the question then becomes, how do we change this cosine of an angle between the apparent dip and the true dip into something that has a beta? Because right now what we have is we have this angle, this horizontal angle. And the way that we're able to get beta is that if we consider that this angle right here, the cosine of this angle is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse, this angle is going to be the same as if we were to say the sine of beta. This would be the opposite over this hypotenuse. So hopefully that makes sense because really what we have here is that the cosine is going to have this length right here, OB, over this hypotenuse. The sine of beta is going to have that same length, OB, except it's over here now, this length over the hypotenuse, which is AO. And those are going to be the exact same thing. And so we can replace the cosine of this angle with the sine of beta. So if we write that out, we're going to get that the tangent of alpha equals the tangent of delta times the sine of beta. And then this is our formula. This is how we would solve if we wanted to get the apparent dip. If we wanted to solve for the true dip, we could simply just move these things over. We could say that the tangent of delta equals the tangent of alpha over the sine of beta. This is also completely correct. So depending on what you're solving for, uh, these would be the formulas that you could use. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope this helped. Uh, if it did, please leave a like, please subscribe, and if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them below. Thanks.